Now I would like to introduce you to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Alberto Stefano. Welcome on stage. Alberto Stefano graduated from the National University of Mexico, UNAM, and the Royal Veterinarian College in London. And he is in the business as a swine production consultant since 1980. You have been lecturing and co-lecturing plenty of books, uh, more than 200 thesis, scientific papers and proceedings. And you're currently holding the position um, as a board member of the directors of the American Association of Swine Veterinarians. The topic of Alberto's speech is similar to the early one, different regions, similar challenges from the perspective of the Latin American countries which represent, to compare with the earlier speech, approximately 3 million sows in technified environment. Alberto, the floor thank is you yours. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you. It's a lovely country and very nice company. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I, I will speak about uh, really many different countries with a big variation between one to each other, but there are some things which are common. So I will... Uh, start saying that, uh, as we can see, the swine production will still growing, but also the trade is increasing faster than the, the growth in, in swine production in the world. This is a projection to 2019, and you will see that the growth will continue. Within this growth, there is uh, at least three Latin American countries which will participate in this uh, production, uh, Brazil mainly, Mexico and Chile which is a small country, but uh, is uh, really growing very fast in swine production. Uh, the countries which has the highest increase since, it, it, this is a swine production evolution from 1961 to 210. And in this you will see how countries has increased the swine production in percent. This is the percent they increased in this, in these years. This, this, uh, and you will see also that Chile and Brazil has a very high increase in, in, in swine production. But of course, that uh, from Asia are the main, the main countries which are growing. These are uh, some of the main uh, producers in the world. You, again, you will see that 80% will come from uh, China, the, the uh, Europe, European countries, the 27 European countries, and, and the, the United States. And the rest of the world will produce uh, all, all the 20%, the rest of the 20%. But, and in this also is Mexico, Brazil, and Chile involved. This is the, the swine production in, in Latin America. And then you will see again that there is, uh, again, three countries which hold most of the swine production, which is uh, Brazil, Mexico, and Chile. And Argentina is coming next. Not too, too big now, but it's growing. But uh, again, very few countries keep most of the swine production in Latin America. Uh, these are the main uh, pork meat consuming countries. This is the total volume of uh, a consumption. And Asia, again, has uh, the, moin, uh, the, the most, uh, where most countries consume pork and followed by Europe and then the United States. But, uh, but Asia is really very big, while Mexico, Brazil, Chile are really very low consumers as the, the rest of the Latin American countries. In this figure, you will see uh, the per capita per consumption in different uh, areas of the world. And Brazil show more or less which is the, 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 the consumption in Latin America. You will see more uh, information about this uh, soon. But uh, Latin America certainly I is not characterized up to now to be a, a very high uh, swine consuming country. These are uh, some figures that, uh, that I was able to get. And you will see that the, that the consumption is very low. It's really very low. There is countries like uh, Argentina which only eat eight kilos. So most of the people eat, uh, eat cattle, more than swine, really. 
And uh, for example, in Chile is the highest from the main swine producing countries. Mexico follow that. But uh, Brazil, which is, uh, has a lot of potential, at least in this figure, is uh, very low consumption per capita. The, these are some of the net exporters in the world from uh, 2001 to 2021. And you, you see the, the projection, how they are, are going to be. And of course, the, the United States make a big switch uh, around 15 years ago because they export a lot of corns and then they decided to start to, to, to uh, transform the grains into meat. And they, they really use it as a policy, so they really grow. For example, in those days, uh, Mexico import 5% of the swine uh, that we consume, but now we are importing around 37%. So, and most of the pig came from the United States, if not all, which means that at least uh, the United States is becoming one of the main uh, exporters. Europe also is playing a role. Um, Brazil has the potential, but uh, has not uh, grown yet, as we, we will see in some other slides. From the importer's point of view, the, the main countries which port uh, pork meat is Japan, Russia. They also were changing some uh, political changes in which they will increase the production and the peak they are consuming. So possibly the importation will be reduced, as is being seen in, in the figure. But Mexico still, and South Korea still consuming a lot of pork from importations. So we are not producing what we have. Uh, some uh, years ago, around, I can't remember right now, but 12, 12 to 15 years ago, we have a, a, a trade agreement with Canada and the United States. And the truth is that, uh, as it many often happen, politicians do not take care really about the, the swine production in Mexico. They thought it was not important. And then uh, many farmers come out of business because it was not really very fair. The, 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 the competition. So that, that's what has happening now after 15 years. We do, do, do not grow and we're importing a lot of meat. Well, Latin America is really a very big area. As a, we only have in common that we speak Spanish beside Brazil that speaks Portuguese, but we are more or less close related. And, and, but the swine production is very different from one country to the other. I really can say that uh, the, the technified production in most of the Latin American countries is new. So the, most, the, the best swine producing farms are 10 years old, not more than that, while the, the, the swine industry in Mexico is older. So many of the facilities are not too, too new. They are really very old. It, this information, it's not so easy to get the good information from Latin America. So I use uh, a lot of the information used by PIC, it's a genetic company, which has a very nice study. And they especially were studying the technified farms, those that you really can get figures and get information that you can use. So this is what I'm going to use now. It covers around, uh, this is the number of sows in technified, which is around the 70% of the swine production in the area. So these are the, the figures from different countries, and these are the countries we are, we are going to, to analyze. This is the production cost. The production cost uh, of, of a green peak in US dollars, and this is an average from May 10 to February 14. So most of the here that I, I'm going to use came from PIC, and those were the years I, I analyzed to give you these figures. This is the cost of, uh, to produce one, one kilo of, of uh, meat, of pork meat. And you will see that they are really very low. Compared with Europe, they are very low. They are very competitive, especially in countries like Argentina, Brazil, and even Chile. Because these produce uh, grain, but these doesn't. They import most of the grain they consume. But nevertheless, you see that the prices remain very low beside uh, Venezuela because due to political reasons, they always have very high price because they cannot import directly. They need to buy uh, dollars in the black market or something like that. 
to get the, the corner and pay. So everything is, is uh, upside down there. And uh, not so easy to understand, so economics. But the, the, the advantage is they sell, they also have a very good uh, selling price, which uh, helps them to, to have this, uh, this cost of production. The core price, also in the same uh, years, as you can see, they are more or less competitive. The truth is that uh, most of these countries import a lot, especially Mexico, Chile, and some of the countries import most of the grains we, we consume for the swine production. This is the soybean. And you see the, the prices that we have get in these five years. And uh, that's interesting because this is the cost of uh, the production in South America comparing with the uh, USA and Canada. As you will see, 74% of the, of the production cost is feeding, is feeding the pig. So it's very high, while uh, facilities, so buildings and so on, are cheaper. And one of the reasons is the corn and soybean, everything is imported, so it's higher the price. We need to transport them and so on. But Usually, the facilities we have, the climate is, is, is milder. So we have open facilities. We do not have too much isolation. We do not have weather control inside. So the, the, the buildings are cheaper than those that are being used in the United States or Canada. So that's one of the reasons. Also, labor uh, is less expensive. That the true is that in Latin America, we use more people than uh, in Europe or in the United States or Canada. Uh, so, sometimes a farm in, in, in the United States could be seven people involved in the management of the reproduction, while in uh, a country like Mexico, Brazil, or some other country could be 20. So sometimes it's double or triple the number of people who is there. So that's one of the reasons because this uh, is not, uh, there is not a big variation because the salaries usually are lower, but there's more people involved. But that's also, uh, talking about cost, it's OK. But co uh, talking about results, the truth is that the, these extra people are, are, are doing really an excellent job. And you will see the figures that, they, they have in, uh, that we have in Latin America, and they are really very good. So for example, this is the farrowing rate. You see that most of the countries are above 90%. This in blue, you have the, the top 10. And the rest is the average. But you see ch countries like Chile, which are, is very close. The average and the top 10 is really very high. So the, the far and rate result and the whole reproductive results are really very good. The, the people who work in the farms take care of the details and everything. They, even I've been in farm with 2,000 sows. And the lady in charge know by name each sow. Unbelievable. But uh, they really take care of the sows. You see how they. Uh, mill the, 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 the piglets and very nice job they do. This is from uh, Born Alive. Again, the number of Born Alive is very high. It's very high in, in most of the countries. And uh, the results are really very good. Again, this is the top 10 and the rest is the, the average, the media. And uh, this is uh, the field that you will have as a result of the reproductive, uh, the reproductive results is the pigs win per sow per year really reflects what is uh, happening there. And you see that uh, even with the big amount of sows, figures are very close to 30 pigs win per sow per year. And the truth is that I've been in farms in Brazil, for example, with 32 win per sow per year. And they are farm of 3,500 3, sows or 5,000 5, sows, and they have Beautiful result, really incredible. They take care of details, and they are doing an excellent job. It, from a feeding conversion rate, some uh, countries have a better result than others. But nevertheless, uh, they are not too bad. This is uh, days to market that uh, also varies from one country to the other and the way to market. I think that many countries are still selling pigs to a very low uh, weight. So there is a, a place to improve and increase the production as soon as they increase the weight to, to market. 
This is the average daily gain. And there is some uh, genetical variation, as far as I can see, because Mexico has a very nice uh, daily gain, but it was uh, because of the final sire board that we use for producing the pig and the, the type of pig that people like in, in Mexico. Well, uh, from the Latin American factors that can affect production, there is big variation. I use uh, four countries to try to understand what's uh, going on. First was the access to grain. Brazil and Argentina uh, have access to grain uh, at a low cost, while Chile and Mexico, we have to import the, the grains. Also, land availability, again, Brazil and Chile has uh, the resources to produce uh, pig or any, any species, while Mexico uh, and Chile do not have too much. There is uh, a lot of mountains. Uh, some areas really very dry, there is not enough water and some other problems. Uh, access to good labor, the truth is that uh, labor is not too bad everywhere. Argentina, since it's, uh, they, they, they start later, they have good people in some farms, but not everywhere. While in Brazil or Chile, you can get people well-trained that can work in a farm. So in Mexico, but varies from one area to the other. Uh, the truth is that there is no high demand for pork in any Latin American countries. And, uh, well, I give you a, an average of, of uh, figures with this to 10 points. And uh, I would like to also mention some of the social and political factors which are involved in the production in Latin America. First is pork production is not strategic. It's not strategic as is in China or some of the countries. So that's... Uh, an important point. Also, there is very little subsidies available, if not any. So there is no support from the government to, to implement this uh, industry. Each time, there is more safety regulation, especially, for example, we import to Korea, uh, Brazil export to, to, to Russia, and regulation become more difficult each time. China is also is a country which is, uh, will, will uh, be imported from Mexico and from Brazil soon. And the regulation also are, you, you need to, to fill up the, the regulation they have. Uh, so also there is more environmental concerns. Each time there is more uh, for the wasting water and many other things, the contamination of rivers and so on. It was very easy before, not now. It's becoming compulsory in some areas where you must establish and how you are going to use the manure and everything. So it's increasing. Uh, Talking about the, the welfare is the same. There is, at least in Mexico, there is many regulation now. Even you can go to Yale if you don't do and follow some rules. And uh, talking about the disease prevention and control, the truth is that uh, it's very strict in some countries. Brazil do not have uh, peers, do not have a uh, PED. Okay, talking about disease peers, uh, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Cuba, and some other areas are free of the disease, while in the rest of the, of, of the countries, the disease is uh, en endemic. And Chile, raid of the disease, but after two years, become infected again. Uh, por science in Cuba make a terrible disaster, but fortunately, after the, the vaccine, we have controlled the problems associated with the disease, so the mortality in, in finishing and winning reduced, was considerably reduced. While the epidemic of porcine, porcine epidemic diarrhea is increasing a lot, unfortunately for us, we import a lot of pigs from the United States, and it only takes three to four months from an outbreak, which was detected in, in April in the United States. In Mexico, in June, we have the disease, and it's widespread. And uh, this disease, uh, I do not have the, the right figures in everywhere, but of course that is, uh, is uh, spreading in, in many countries and is really something very nasty. Uh, yes, as, as a conclusion, just uh, want, pork will be the most preferred meat in the world and in, in Latin America is growing. Asia consumption, consumption will still grow. Countries like Brazil and Argentina are, are really potential exporters. Some countries will accelerate pork production. And as we have been seeing the whole day, is, uh, we need to produce more with less, less, up. 
less water and land in a, in a more efficient way with a, a disease control, more technology, and of course, that best practice. Well, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> I consumed the 20, I'm sorry. 50 minutes or what, so 20? Perfect, perfect, sorry. Alberto. Okay. Okay. I think I was stressing you a bit with my signals giving on the timing. <laughs> <laughs> Not to fulfill the but time. Perfect and surprising, right? Uh, maybe not to be expected that the region is so inhomogeneous. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. There is still time for a quick question, if there is one. No, if not, please, there is one, yeah, please. Do you know why this low consumption of pork in South America? Why is the reason why? Is well, this a question of price, culture? I think this is cultural. I think that uh, the, the cattle was, has been uh, in, in the dish of, uh, of Latin America for years, especially countries like uh, Brazil or Argentina, there is a lot. Countries like Mexico and now even Brazil, there is some dishes, special dishes which consume a lot of pork, but not, uh, it was not really generally accepted. Also, the other point which played a role was that it was, I don't know the word, but we say satanized or it was then that the, the quality of the pork was bad. But this is only uh, bad information. We need to educate doctors, mainly, because those are the first that always say saying that the pork is bad. And uh, sometimes they don't allow us to, to talk in TV or so on about this. But uh, I think that uh, it's changing and it's increasing the, the consumption. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alberto.